Well, I will start over to say that my name is Christina Gallagher. I am the marketing director here at Homestead Village. And we wanted to thank you so much for joining us this morning on our home staging webinar. We're here with Sue Kaufman, who has been a longtime friend of Homestead Village and has helped many people with their uh, transition with staging their home, but also moving into their new home and being inspired to decorate it beautifully and live in lovely spaces. And uh, again, we just thank you so much for joining us and we hope you enjoy today's presentation. Without further ado, I'll introduce Sue and welcome <laughs> you to our seminar today. Well, thank you, Christina. Thank you so much. I so much enjoy coming here um, every year and, and kind of speaking with all the people who are thinking about moving into this really great, this really great place here. It's uh, everybody who I know who lives here just loves it. So I'm very excited and we will get started. What we're going to do today is, I'm gonna see if that works there. Um, I just have to turn these. There we go. Okay, thank you. So today, what we're gonna do is just kind of talk about different ways that can help you get your homes ready for sale so that you can move here. And um, there's a lot of different little tips and strategies that go into property getting your home ready for sale. So without further ado, let me introduce myself a little bit. Um, I am the founder, the owner, and the creative director of SKC Staging. We have um, a warehouse outside of Middletown that we keep all of our goods in um, art, furniture, accessories, and things along that line. We have our own home goods store, basically. So we can serve um, anyone who needs anything in the, in the home staging industry um, to get their home ready for sale. We, we probably have it at our warehouse. Um, our company has been very fortunate to have won some national awards along the way, and um, we've, been very, we've been very blessed. So who am I? Well, I'm a mom. Um, my husband here is on the right. My husband's Dave Unger. And my sons have, and have each married wonderful daughters. And uh, my sons are Justin and Travis Howes. Their, daughter, their wives are Amy and Roma. And then I have five grandchildren that are the light of my life. However, they're not this young anymore because this picture is quite old. And uh, we were going to have new pictures taken last year, but because of COVID, it just never happened. So this year, hopefully, uh, we'll be, be able to upgrade. The, the tallest of my grandchildren is now 15. So that gives you an idea how old the picture is. If you're from this area, in the Lancaster area, you may know my parents, Bob and Mim Kaufman. And if you're in the farming industry, you may know them because I was raised on a dairy farm outside of E-Town. And um, these are my parents. And um, just thought it's always nice to let people know a little bit about who you are. Being raised on a dairy farm, we love cows. Um, cows were the most important central part of our family. And um, so this is a picture that was taken at the Mannheim Fair with my sister and myself, my sister, Linda. And these are our award-winning cows. And uh, we do who we both loved. And it's a picture I still treasure to this day. Another picture of, of my husband and I with our grandkids. My husband has just this year joined me in the company. And um, so he's kind of our jack of all trades. He handles, he helps with stagings. He helps with um, marketing. He helps with sales and a little bit of everything. So he's a very important part. And this is the SKC team, uh, minus my husband, because it was Christmas and he hadn't started yet. But um, we have Kirsten, who is in the purple, and Tiffany in the white, and Kendra in the red. So to get on with what we're doing, your reality is that you're you're either facing retirement or you're already in retirement. And what a wonderful place to be because we freedom is finally here. And um, even if you're still working, um, things are just a little bit less, less hectic in your life in some ways. Not less busy, but maybe less hectic. So as we go on and move forward to move, we'll embrace the next chapter of our life and go through the changes that we, that we go through. But you know, change can sometimes be very stressful, and it doesn't have to be when it comes to moving, although moving is one of the more stressful things that you'll come into, that people said that you do. But we'll learn how you can delegate responsibilities to other people and delegate different things. So we're going to move forward, 
and um, the adventure awaits. So let's make the, the best of the rest of your life. And um, when you have worries and things along that line, verbalize them and be upfront, rely on your family to help you through them. Retirement and moving can be a fun experience. So um, I'm, I'm ready to move on. I am, I am in the same age bracket as probably what a, a good portion of you are. And um, I know that I'm excited about the next chapter of my life, uh, even though I'll be working for a while longer. So um, let's just, just share all of this today and, and we'll see how Stangy can help you move on to the next part. So you're selling your house. What do you do? One thing that's very important that I stress to realtors or to sellers everywhere is to understand that the way that you live in your home and the way that you market it for sale are two very, very different things. Why are they different? Well, when you live in your home, it's all about you. It's all about the art. The art on the wall is about you. The pictures on the wall are all about you. The um, carpet is carpet that you like. The accessories in the house, the wallpaper is what you like. The paint colors are what you like. It's just everything that makes you homey and, and that you've built in your family and it makes you happy to be there. That's important. However, when you are gonna sell your home, it's a completely different ball game. We have to then market for the people who are coming in the home. And in some ways I say that it doesn't even, you, you become secondary in what your home looks like because we have to think about the people who are walking in the front door. So a very important fact to remember is selling your home is all about the buyer. So we'll be talking about that today and talking about how we, we change our point of view about where we live. Professional certified home stagers know how to turn their sellers' properties into buyers' dream homes. Um, you know, when buyers move into a home, they want to move into one that's ready. Uh, they want to move into a house that they don't have to spend a lot of time remodeling because they're very busy these days. Probably people who move into your homes, they're gonna be young. Of course, they're gonna be younger. They're gonna have families. So the house has to fit for their lifestyle. Um, I'm sorry, you can't read that better. It does say buyers want to purchase a home that looks like it's straight out of HGTV and they want it to be turnkey ready when they move in. So that requires a little bit of work on the seller side to get a house prepared to that point. The secret to selling or for home staging is that we, homes that are staged sell faster and they sell for more money, even in this market. This market right now, homes are selling very quickly because there aren't that many on the market. And so everyone who's trying to move is jumping on the same houses. But we have seen and we know that houses that are, that are staged sell even more quickly. And what the best part about it is they get more offers. So it, can, it creates the emotional connection. So that's a very valuable thing and um, it improves the perceived value of the property. Um, let's shift that just a little bit. Okay. A home that is professionally staged will sell more quickly because even more quickly than when it's not staged or simply decluttered because there's still a lot that if you just declutter your home there's still a lot of other things and a lot of other factors that come into the home um, when buyers are walking in that they, they can see and they can point out. So de decluttering is not enough to really get the most money for your home. We have to edit it and update it. And I know that that probably goes, ugh, but um, it's just a matter of fact, your house is in a competition. And so they're looking, when, they're, when buyers are looking at other homes, they're trying to figure out which home they like better. The ones that look the best and the ones that create the emotional connection are the homes that are going to sell for more money. You can, um, a, a home stager can help you figure out where to put your budget, your budgeted money into a home to make more profit. So it's all about people who, making people fall in love with your home so that they, they will outbid other buyers in order to get to, get to it. Stage houses will stand out in their in prospective buyers' minds. So if they're looking at a lot of homes, 
they're going to remember the ones that that create that emotional connection in them when they walk into that home. Um, it really is about emotional connection. They look better and they show better than the competition that's on the market. They create that connection. They're more visually appealing in print and online marketing. And that's real important as well as print and online marketing, especially online marketing is where everyone's first going to find their homes. Um, so we need, to, we need to make sure that when they look at those homes online and they're going through the, the rooms, they know what rooms are what. Um, and it's all, the pictures are perfectly clear and bright and things go really well. Um, stage houses have less reasons for a buyer to ask for concessions. Um, what does that mean? Basically, a, a staged house will help buyers not look at the negatives of the home as much as if it's not a staged home or if it's a vacant home. Um, a staged home, they, they keep their focus on them living in that house and not as much on maybe there's not as much uh, room in one home as room is what they like. If it's staged, they can still see that there's plenty of room in it for whatever purpose that room is needed for. And staged homes are viewed by buyers as well-maintained, which is another very important thing. So here we have a vacant home. Just look at the difference. On the top picture, there is um, a very nice fireplace, but that's about it in that whole home. When you put the furniture in, you create a scene that buyers come in. They can actually sit down on that furniture and they can feel Goodness gracious, I want to live in this house. This is magnificent. Look, I can sit here and look out the window and see the, the trees. But when they're in a vacant home, they just walk through it. And they don't really take the time to visualize and feel themselves living there. That is the real secret, too, of, of staging vacant homes, is to make that buyer spend more time in the house so that they fall in love with it. This is an occupied house. And by occupied, I mean uh, where the house is on the market, the people are still living in the home. And this is one of my favorite pictures because this was such a great transformation. On the picture on the left, you'll see we, um, they have a dining table right in front of the fireplace. And you can see in the foreground, there's a kitchen sink. So the kitchen, it went directly to the kitchen. It was a very open floor plan. What we did see around the fireplace was their living room. And it was a smaller room and the furniture was more cramped in that room. So we switched it around because in today's, in younger families today, they want to have, and so, so do we in our, in our age bracket, we want to have homes that are more open so that when we're working in the kitchen, we can talk to the people who are in the living room. So we switched the two around and, and used their furniture. It made a huge difference. This house sold in four days. And um, this, was, this was actually two years ago. I just really like this, this picture a lot. So how do you start staging? What's involved in the staging process? The first thing, especially in occupied homes um, and sometimes in vacant homes as well, is to have a staging consultation with an accredited staging company. Look for that accreditation. Um, people who have gone through training, and are continually up, still keeping up to date by continuing education on the staging industry and the staging market and what's working and what's not, uh, where the industry is going, the whole real estate industry, they are the people that you wanna associate with. So find an accredited staging company to work with. There are a lot of people who, who are talented at their job, but they still don't know a lot of the intricate things. So that's important. Staging companies will walk, you through, will walk through the property with you. They'll advise you how to maximize your home's selling potential. You'll learn how to, you know, what should stay and what should go. That's often, I mean, when you live in the house, you live with a lot more stuff than what you want to have in the house when you're putting it on the market and, and have people walk through. Um, what home repairs are we needing? What's the room function for that particular room that it's not being today? Uh, you learn about depersonalizing and decluttering and cleaning. Uh, we will we help with paint selection and curb appeal because once they find your home online, they're going to drive by it. So you want to make sure the curb appeal is fantastic. 
we may suggest that you move furniture. Um, so if there's a lot of furniture in a room. You know, if you look at the little, if you look at the little diagram, that's pretty much a very simple. What a lot of a lot of our generation will work, will move into uh, a home that has a dining room and a living room, kind of in a combination area. So we just we talk about that kind of thing. Um, you'll learn about the need for pressure washing. Almost every house, especially in the spring, needs to be pressure washed, at least the front porch and, and the windows and things along that line. Um, most homes need to have some rooms painted, if not all the rooms painted. Uh, we'll get into paint colors a little bit later. Sometimes we need to replace toilets. Sometimes we have to replace carpeting. More often in this day and age, we are ripping out carpeting and putting in LVP or a hardwood floor because that is what the younger people are looking for. We all learned how about changing out some art. We want big art for staging homes. The bigger, the better. Um, the reason for that is when you have small pieces of art, um, people will take their time to go up and look at each one of those pieces individually. That takes away from the time they're supposed to be spending looking at your house. When you have big art, the eye will, will glance at all the artists that goes into the room as they, as they go into the room and they will, they, they'll get caught up in the feeling of the room and not so much individual little pictures. And you also wanna take down family portraits for the very same reason. People get, they look to see who lives here. Do they know those people? And after all, they forget why they're in the house. So um, personal names, always take down names, um, certificates, plaques, kids, room, kids' names in rooms. You don't want those on, on, online. You don't want the whole world knowing this is Taylor's room. Uh, we also often recommend that we change out bedding to go to something that's more simple, more basic, and more neutral. We wanna go from this to this. Closets are a very important part. While they may seem like it's a great place to put all the junk while you're selling your home, we don't want the closets to look like this. Um, if they open up and there's no room in the closet, then your buyers are automatically gonna say, there's no room for us in this house either. So closets are a big important thing. I'll give you a, a real secret on closets. If the floor has nothing on it at all, it grows in size. So important. And clean. Definitely a clean home is going to out, outshine anybody else's home um, that's out there. I was at a home yesterday. We're staging a home yesterday. And um, they have two large dogs. Love the dogs. They're as sweet as could be. But the dogs sleep in the bedroom. And the, the bedroom, even after the carpets were cleaned, really smell like dog. So they have to work on getting that, getting the dog beds out of there and, and, and work on getting that done here quickly before that house actually goes on the market. Occupied rooms become much more welcoming when they're staged. Here's a, the top picture shows what we, uh, the room that we went to, a house that we went to. And as you can see, this is, we used only her furniture to stage her house. We didn't bring in anything on this one. We, we do that service as well. So we only used her furniture, but we moved it around. And look how much more space comes into that room now because the furniture isn't blocking it at the beginning. It made a huge difference. Vacant rooms come to life when they're staged. As we talked about before, people can actually come in and sit. If you've ever gone to a, uh, on a parade of homes or anything along that line, and you walk through vacant homes, most of the, most of the time now they're staging all the, all the parade of homes houses, which is a good thing. But uh, they're used to, they used to not do that. So when you would walk through a vacant home, people would like walk through it. They're in, they walk through the rooms and they're out the door. The staged homes, people lingered. They stayed, they asked, they felt like that they, they wanted their house to look like this. They, they wanted to live in that house. So that's a very important thing to consider when you're buying or you, when you're selling your house. So here, which room would you rather consider your home as you're walking through it? Here, the picture, the picture on the bottom, we, we changed the paint color. It's a, it was a tan, up, up and above it was red. And red is never a good color to have in a staged home. Uh, sorry, but it's just not. A lot of people do have red walls, they like them. That's a personal color. 
So how much does staging cost? Well, staging is always less expensive than what the first price reduction is going to be. So the first price reduction on, and I'd say on a, on a $250,000 house or a $300,000 house is going to be probably 10 to 15% of, of what that is. They, that's reduced. Well, staging is far less. You can stage a home for less than $5,000 in most cases. Now you get into the luxury homes, you may spend a little bit more than that. But um, our average staging cost for a vacant home in the $350,000 is around $3,000 to, to bring in the furniture and the accessories and the art and get it all ready. So it's really a lot much less. It's, it's good to be forward thinking in the whole process and get more money in the end. We're going to review a few staging tips, some things for you to think about. Color makes a difference if it's all color that is accessories and art. We need a basic natural neutral background with the walls and the carpeting. Then we bring in the color through everything else. Um, here, it was a very bland, very bland white room. Now white, white is coming back into style for walls. Um, when these pictures were taken, it was gray. And this area that we live in, it's gonna take a little while longer to get, to not have gray be the popular color, but it is on its way out. So if you're thinking about what color to paint these days, I'm gonna suggest not gray. I would suggest white or a light tan because the browns are gonna be coming back in. So white, cream, a light tan, something in that ballpark. But here we just added the color through the curtains and the art, or we don't see the art, but the accessories that are here. And because the, so the chairs were a little funky, we just put a little chair covering over them and made them a little more formal. You wanna emphasize the best selling features of your home. This was a wonderful, wonderful home. There wasn't anything that was not really nice in this home. But by far, this was their most selling feature. So, you know, stage that up, make that look really great as well. This is a this was a brand new build from a, a builder, and he wanted me to come up because he just wasn't getting the the right people in the house. He said the house seemed too small to people. The beautiful view. That's a, a creek in the background there. And it was a beautiful view, but this room was very small. As you can see, I used a love seat in it um, because the sofa would have been a little bit big, but with a love seat and two chairs, the room grew in size visually. And you can now people now people could envision that you could seat four people and maybe you know even have a little larger sofa if you wanted to in here. And this home sold very quickly after it was staged when it had been on the market for, oh, I think it was four months vacant and um, they couldn't get it. So it sold right away. It's all about how people feel in a house. So um, we will often recommend you repaint colors uh, of the walls. And we did talk about that a little bit. We'll even have some more pictures. Another important thing to do is make sure you wash those windows inside and out. We want as much natural light to come in. We often recommend that people remove the screens because you'd be surprised how much window screens prohibit natural light to come in. So that's very important. Um, in most homes, we will update their lighting, recommend to update the lighting. Um, that is because people are just used to having light in their home. They don't really think about it that much. And it's very easy just to go with what you have. And the bronzy or the brassy gold from the 80s and the 90s is very prevalent in many homes. So we, we make suggestions on what to get for that. And this home, we also brought in accessories. We used their furniture, but brought in some accessories. Herb appeal. It was a, this, the house on the left was very nice. It, it was in a very popular area of Camp Hill. And, um, but we just knew that by a few little changes, the curb appeal would change. So the, the red door, taking off the screen door and painting the door red, and then removing the little um, rail, hand, hand, hand rails, um, just made this more open and exciting. And um, people, it made a big difference. Make sure that your house numbers on the front of your house are very easy to read because 
they'll be looking after they after they find you online. They're going to look and do their drive by. So the front porch and the and the front door need to impress people. This is I can't express this enough. Hire a professional real estate photographer to photograph your property. They know what they're doing. They they know the lighting. They can make it look so much better. The picture here on the right. Um, or on the left, I'm sorry, the picture on the left was just me with my iPhone, same house, one day apart. I'm on the, that was for an open house. And then my photographer removed the, the sign that was there, but see the difference? And it doesn't even show as well as it should, but it, um, there's a lot of difference when you hire a professional photographer. So we're gonna here test your savvy. We were talking about how vacant homes should not be vacant online. What do you think this room is? This is a room that was actually online and um, it's a lovely room, but most people guess that it's the living room, but it's actually a bedroom. So people looking online would not know that this is the master bedroom because it did not show it. So that's, we need to show people what the rooms are. This is a before picture. Um, it really should have, I don't know why it only put half the, half the wall on there, but it did. So the, we painted the walls in this particular house and brought in some accessories and art and changed out some things to this. So you can see it makes a big difference. Um, now here we had, nothing really was too exciting and you can't see that, that what's above the mantle, but it was just candles. Here we brought in things that really accentuated the focal point of the home. Wallpaper should just about always be removed. Um, wallpaper is coming in style again. It's been a while, but no two people really like the same wallpaper. Um, you know, there's different generations. What our generation might like, younger generations aren't going to like. So I, it's very seldom that I don't recommend that you remove wallpaper from, from your kitchens, from your living rooms, from your, bed, your bedrooms. Here's another wallpaper picture. This was a house in E-Town. And, um, and when you look at this, your eye doesn't know where to go. So that's kind of how you feel when you walk into the room. Where, what do I need to look at? Because we have the black cabinet on the, on the right. We have the wallpaper and then we have red. Where did, what did we focus on here? So by removing all of those things, now we see the whole room for all its glory. Made it, you know, just go back just made a really big difference. And in most cases, we want to stage a bedroom as a bedroom. Um, many homes now have their guest room in, as an office, which is important too. And this, because of COVID, offices have become much more important in a, in a buyer's or in a seller's home, or in a buyer's mind. Um, so we do always want to have an office in the room. Sometimes what we'll do is if we have a, a room that's an office and a bed that should be a bedroom, we may make it into both. Um, put a futon in it and kind of make it look like it's a guest room and an office at the same time, just so people can envision an office in the room or in the house. This, this was a, a man cave that was actually a living room. Uh, the husband in this, in this property loved his dark red room. I mean, everything is red. The ceilings are red, the walls are red. It was all very red. It was very, very dark because there was not much natural light coming in. He really balked at changing it out, but I finally convinced him, or his wife convinced him finally, that we needed to do that. So you can see how much lighter and brighter it was with the walls being painted, the ceilings going back to white, which highlighted the architecture in the room, and then um, moving furniture around and bringing in some additional art and accessories. Loud wall-to-wall -wall carpeting is outdated. Um, most, most buyers these days are looking for hardwood floors or LVP floors, but in, a lot of people still like their carpets upstairs in their bedrooms, but loud carpeting, full collar carpeting is, is something that they'll want to have removed. So it's really smart to think ahead and you say, well, I don't want to put it in. I don't know that, I, that the collar that I'm going to make the carpet is going to be what they want. If it's neutral, it'll work. And if it's blue, it might not. So always think about replacing that carpet first. Um, carpeting can be 
I always recommend that you get a middle grade carpet and then a really, really good padding underneath it. And that's gonna, it's gonna feel like it's top of the line. So by doing that, um, what happens if you don't upgrade some things? Here's what happens when you don't upgrade some things. Um, a buyer will come in and say, okay, we need to put new kitchen cabinets in or kitchen counters in, and we need new carpeting um, throughout the house. That's gonna cost $25,000. It might be, I think, at least $25,000. So they're going to come to the realtor and say, you know, it's I, I need a price reduction of 30,000 bucks because I've got so much work to do in this house. Um, if you had spent some money putting new carpeting in and maybe replacing the, cab, the countertops in the kitchen and spent money on that side, you will have made money because they, they will be reducing the price by double. Um, did I use, I'm not sure that I used the right numbers there, but anyway, um, <laughs> Usually what, what buyers will do is they will try to, re, to come down and negotiate a price at least twice as much as they think they have to spend in order to feel good about buying that house. Here are a little few, few tricks of the trade to make life a little easier. When you move things off of your carpet, there's always these divots. If you put ice in the divots and let the ice melt and dry overnight, the carpet will raise up. Sometimes you have to do it twice, but not usually. So that's a very good clue when you have, when you empty out a room and there's a lot of divots everywhere. Um, again, we're going back to the gold collar with the middle picture. That brassy gold is not what's popular. And if you can have your painter or yourself spray paint it another collar, bronze or silver or black, that's gonna update it a lot. Same with, same way, goes with, same thing goes with the um, doorknobs. That it makes a big, huge difference. Okay, downsizing. We, when you're moving into a smaller place, if for those of you who are, it's very hard, but you know, we need to get rid of all the shoes that you've kept for a long time because you might wear them again. <laughs> or um, you know, just, we just need to downsize. Um, little things everywhere. Um, here's, a little, here's a little humor. I always like this. It says, now the kids are gone, I'm thinking of downsizing to a sensible flat. Has to do with the shoes. Um, tips on downsizing. It's, it's emotionally draining to move. Um, it's, hard, you know, it's hard because you emotionally have to go through things about what to get rid of and what to keep. You have to take inventory of things. You have to pack up your most treasured items to move with you. So don't forget the dog. Start really early. Um, it's really great to start months and months before you plan to move. Uh, if you wait till a month out, you have, there's so much to do and, and you'll feel so stressed. So start a year ahead of time if you know you're going to be moving or you, you have, you know, you're on a list to move in somewhere. Start packing a room up. Donate what you, what you know is still good, but you're not going to need. Give away to your relatives and your kids what they will take. Um, have a yard sale or just donate to, or just put things in the trash that are actually just worn out and you've been keeping for some reason or other and no, no one's gonna really want them. So take advantage of those places to, to do that and start early. I'm gonna go over these questions because I think they make you think. Um, if anyone wants these questions, I email me. Um, my email is sue at suekaufman.com or um, email me and I will email them back to you. They're a good, it's a good little reference. 10 questions to help you declutter. Is this something that I use regularly? If not, is it something that I love? And if it's not, am I keeping this out of obligation or expectation? Am I holding onto this because I think I should love it? Maybe it's something that's been given to you and you think, oh, you know, this was, it has a little bit of sentimental value. You can't throw it away. But maybe if you were to give that to someone who's special to you, it would become their sentimental objects to keep for a while. Um, I use, am I saving this just in case? I, I know I've done that already. Do I have multiples of the same thing? Could, I, could something else that I own do the very same job as this piece? Well, I have to, well, I have to. Am I holding onto a broken item to fix one day? I, I know that there's some of you out there that are doing that. Is this item worth the time I spend cleaning it and storing it? And could I use this space for something else? 
So there, there, that's a good little list. So we're gonna take your house from this to this. In this particular property, we moved, this was the living room on the above picture, well, both pictures. Uh, we moved the TV couch, basically is what that was, upstairs to a room and made it a viewing room upstairs with the, with a big TV screen and all of that. And it worked out perfectly. And then we brought in some other items for them. This transformation just causes emotional buyer connection. Um, an empty room is up in, up in the top. We took the curtain away because that's all that you saw when you walked into that room was that blue curtain. So even if they had, if they had kept it vacant, this house was, was vacant for a while in the market. And that's what people would see. So then we staged it into the bedroom that was meant to and created to be. And people knew, now people had, they go in there and they think, you know, I have my own space. The parents have their own space in the primary bedroom where they can just sit and relax and watch their own television shows. So the bottom line is keep calm during the moving process and call a home stager. We will help you figure it all out. This is my mantra right here. How can I relax when I know this couch would look so much better in the opposite corner? It's, it makes me smile every time because, and I, that's exactly what I, what I think when I go into people's homes. <laughs> so here's to getting your house sold and moving on with your life. I, I wish you the best. It's going to be um, a long, it's a process, but we are here as stagers. Home staging professionals are here to help you through that whole process to help you manage it better. And if you are interested in ever meeting up with any of us on, on my team, we would, we would love it. My phone number, which is not here, because I forgot to mention it, is 717-471-6519. Um, you can find it on our website. You can find it on our Instagram pages and Facebook and all those different places. Please look us up, friend us, ask any questions. Uh, I think we're going to go over some questions that may have come in. Um, right now. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this has made sense for you and it's not overwhelming for you. Um, there's so much to look forward to. We'll just get through this chapter. Okay. So all right. So is here. Does anyone have any questions? If you'd like to place them into the chat, uh, we can read them and Sue can answer them for you. There's two. Oh, someone lost. Okay, there's why. What is your email and do you serve the EFRDA? That's a very good question. We serve the basically the 717 area code. Uh, we're, our, our, our warehouse is located in Middletown. So we go as far as, as Carlisle, Chambersburg, if we need to. And then uh, we go to York, we go to Berks County, Lebanon County. So yeah, we, we would love to go to EFRDA. Um, we have a team of professional movers who do our moving for us and things like that. Can you live in and sell your home? You can, it, it's a little bit more difficult, but yes, absolutely. And that's what we have the occupied consultations for. We can help you motivate through that. Most people live in their homes as they're on the market. So absolutely. It just takes, it's a little more work because you do have to, every time you have a showing, you have to get the house ready. But with, with, prep, with the right preparation and you can get things very, like you can, like you can have a, um, for instance, if you have a lot of things on your desk and you don't want those things on your desk when the house, when the people are showing your house, you just have a, a laundry basket, you pile everything into that laundry basket and put it in the car when you go. Little things like that we can help you with. We can type your email address into the chat. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Um, yes, so my email address is, is this gonna do it? Hold on. I'll... Okay, there we go. Sue at suekaufman.com and the number is 717-471-6519. So look us up on, on Facebook. We have a lot of, we, we keep that up to date very regularly and uh, we're on LinkedIn as well. Should a front door always pop? Yes, I think so. And it can, it, the color doesn't have to be a wild color. Um, it just really needs to blend in well with the exterior of your home. 
Sometimes, um, you know, if red, red doors are very popular, they really zoom in on things. Uh, black doors are very classic and very elegant. I often recommend black, but we, we will recommend all those colors to you um, in, a, in a staging consultation so that you can have a curb appeal that pops. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks, Christina. You're welcome. Cool. Is that too long? Yep. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, one last final item here is that our next upcoming event is actually going to be an in-person event. Um, we'll try to space everybody else uh, out in the area. And you can wear a mask, of course. But it will be Mimosas in the Muse. And we'll have Mimosas to go. And, they won't be open, of course, so we'll have everyone driving safely, but just a, a small open house in our Muse neighborhood so that you can see some of the homes that are being um, renovated and turned over in that area and just um, get together and potentially see some friends and meet some neighbors who live in the Muse neighborhood. So uh, reach out to us if you'd like more information, and we will also be sending out invitations here shortly. And uh, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to email us or email Sue. And we hope to see you all in the not too distant future. Thanks again for joining us.